Hello guys, what if I told you that for less than 60 pounds you could own a fully functional computer, one that fits inside a keyboard? That's exactly what this is. It's called the Raspberry Pi 400. This tiny powerhouse is designed for coding, browsing the web and media playback and lots more without breaking the bank. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing, setting it up, taking it through its spaces, talking about the pros, the cons, if it's something you should get and if it's worth your time. Welcome to the show guys, GV Tech. I'm G Vader and as always, Let's get to it. So here it is. This is the Raspberry Pi 400, a personal computer built directly into a keyboard. Super handy, right? Let's uh, open it up and see what's inside. I've got the bare bones version here. This means you only get the keyboard computer combo. First impressions, uh, this thing feels sturdy. I love the design. It's compact and has a slick up uh, vibe and design to it. The keys have a decent amount of travel, which is good for any keyboard. So that's a good thing. Uh, it looks good. So let's take a look at the connectivity options and the port options. Uh, we have a gigabit Ethernet port. We have one USB uh, 2 port and two USB 3 ports. Uh, we have a USB C port for power and also a micro HDMI port, two of them actually. So you can connect to a, a monitor. Also, we also have a micro SD slots. Uh, that's where you put the operating system in the card. And we also have um, a GPIO pins that's sealed on the other side there with the black seal so you can have your programming and electronic projects connected to this and by the way this version of the raspberry pi 400 comes with four gigabyte of ram to get started you'll need a micro sd card with the raspberry pi os pre-installed here's mine it's eight gigabytes uh, with the os already loaded uh, all i need to do is to slide it in to uh, the slot at the back here and i'm good to go so apart from the keyboard, you need a few extra accessories to complete your setup. One is a USB-C power cable. I'm using a standard phone charger that delivers five volts. Uh, you'll also need a mouse. Any USB or wireless mouse would do, but I like using wireless mouses, so that's what I'm gonna use as well for this one. An HDMI cable uh, that connects the Pi to an external display. So this display could be a monitor or uh, your TV. Speaking of monitors, I've got this 15 inch portable monitor, which is a perfect match for the Pi 400. It's lightweight, has a built in stand and connects via USB-C or mini HDMI. Uh, that means I would need another, another adapter for the HDMI uh, cable, but that's fine. It's perfect for setups like this because it's easy to carry around and doesn't need a separate power source when connecting to some devices. Uh, so with that, all uh, laid out i think we're good to go uh, time to make the connection and test this out okay let's see how it all comes together so uh, the micro hdmi cable goes from the raspberry pi to the monitor uh, the usb-c power cable plugs into the raspberry pi to power it and the mouse dongle goes into one of the ports so that's all connected finally i have powered the monitor with a separate USB-C uh, charger. And that's it, everything's connected. Now let's power it on and see how it performs. Here we go, the Raspberry Pi 4 is booting up and we are greeted by the desktop interface. Everything you see here is running directly from the Pi, no tricks, no gimmicks. Uh, let's explore the Raspberry Pi OS features and functions. The desktop is simple yet functional and the OS comes preloaded with some great software. Uh, let's give it a quick tour. For uh, programming, you've got tools like Python and Scratch. It's a great learning platform for beginners or hobbyists for kids to teach them how to program. For productivity, there's Libre Office. It's perfect for word processing, spreadsheets, and presentations, basically a mimic of uh, Microsoft Office Suite. Uh, for browsing, you have Chromium that comes preloaded and also Firefox. You can choose uh, options between those two. 
uh, while it's not lightning fast, it handles browsing just fine. So for light stuff like going on YouTube, watching videos, browsing the web, checking your emails online, that sort of thing, uh, it's great for those, but not for heavy lifting where you open multiple browsers and stuff. And for entertainment, there's a VLC uh, player that's universal at this point, uh, allows you to play videos smoothly. Um, he has a classic superhero animated series, uh, one of my favorite, Batman. And I'm going to play a small clip uh, and you see that it runs uh, flawlessly. The Raspberry Pi 400 makes a great little media player for casual use, but not for heavy stuff like I said before. Uh, you can customize the setup to suit your preferences. For example, I have moved the tax bar to the bottom of the screen so it looks more like uh, the layout that most people are used to. By default, it's at the top of the, of the screen, but I've set it to the bottom so uh, you can tweak and do a couple of things. You can tweak things like the resolution, the theme, the background uh, desktop image. So basically all the normal functionalities that you want on a basic desktop OS, yeah, you have them here. Performance wise, it's not the flash. This version has only four gig of RAM, but it's perfect for light tasks, like light programming and tinkering. Uh, what I love most is the portability. The entire computer is inside this keyboard and it can even run on a power bank. Uh, this makes it great for on-the-go projects or learning environments and in uh, areas where there's uh, power shortages and so on and so forth in developing uh, um, uh, economies, this would come in handy. I see this being used in computer labs, in primary schools, in secondary schools, in, in, in such environments. If you have a little one, um, or ward or your child they want to get into computing I think this is something you can get them to pique their interest and get them uh, into the whole uh, IT space and IT field whether you're coding learning or just need a simple computer this little device punches well above its weight so is the Raspberry Pi 400 worth it let's break it down here are the pros it is super affordable Coming in at just £57, you get a full computer all in this keyboard form factor. So that's a good deal. It's also lightweight and easy to handle. So it's not bulky. You don't have the issues of having a big, heavy, heavy laptop or heavy uh, desktop. So that's one thing. It's also low powered, meaning that it can run on very low power. It can even run on a power bank. That means that it is travel friendly. So you can put it in your backpack and travel anywhere. And then once you have a, a monitor, you can plug it into a monitor and you're good to go. It's also a great learning tool. So for people that want to learn uh, programming, Python and so on, it's a good tool to have. Even for hobbyists, it's also a good tool to have. It also comes bundled with the necessary software for you to get started. So like I mentioned, uh, having the office-like software for you to do your word processing, your Excel sheets, that kind of thing, your presentations, it comes with those. You can also browse the web and do all those basic things that you wanna do. So if it's for everyday use, like checking your emails, consuming content, this will be a great tool for you to have. So now let's go to the cons. So the first thing is that this device is not built for speed. So if you're into doing video editing or doing a lot of multitasking every day, this is not the tool for you. I would advise you get a more beefier laptop or a full-blown desktop to help you handle those beefier tasks. It is also a uh, standalone, so you need to have accessories. And some people might find that a bit inconveniencing. But again, it's up to you. You're getting a good deal. But again, that's that's a that's an inconvenience nonetheless to have to have uh, connections to a monitor, get a mouse, get a, a HDMI cables, and so on. Speaking of HDMI cables, uh, having these two micro uh, HDMI ports might be an issue for a couple of people because you need to get an adapter in addition to having the normal HDMI cables that you have lying around the house. So that might be a minor inconvenience for folks. All in all, it all boils down to what you want to achieve and what your daily tasks are. So if it's for light use that you're going to do, browsing the web, checking emails, like I mentioned before, and consuming basic content, then you can get this. But if you want to do heavier tasks that require multitasking and heavy use, then you might go ahead and get a laptop 
or a desktop because this thing uh, has four gig of RAM. So uh, it can really uh, juggle and ha ha handle heavy stuff. But that's, uh, that's my review and recommendation all the same. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to leave a like, uh, comment and share, subscribe even for more content. And uh, until the next time, be good. See you in the next one.